uh, instead of having to actually go outside in the class. Uh, just a quick note. Alright, let's go ahead and go into main and uh, make some time objects. Uh, first, I'll just make a time object t, and I'll just have it be zero. So this will initialize all the members to zero. So then, I'm going to go ahead and do t equals t plus a new time object. And I'll make this maybe 2 days, 13 hours, uh, 40 minutes, and 15 seconds. Okay? So now, uh, time, or our, our t object, should be the same as this, because we're basically just adding that to 0. So, let's see, let's go ahead and go after first addition. And then, let's see, I guess I was wrong about finishing the class. I will need to write out that output method again. Um, just put it here. Uh, I think that that's right. Should be. Make sure you don't drop a quotation mark here, because those can kind of be tricky. So I think we're good though. Um. Okay. So then we'll just t dot output, and then let's go ahead and try multiply by two. T equals t times two. Um. Uh, let's do another addition. So one thing that's that's kind of cool about the way we've set this up is we can chain together our addition. So we can go t equals t plus maybe it's uh, one day, 12 hours, uh, 0 minutes, 13 seconds. Uh, and then we can add another time object here. So let's make this uh, 4 days, 11 hours, for, uh, 30 minutes, and 12 seconds. So the way this will work is it'll again go from right to left. It'll add these time objects and return another time, which will then get fed into uh, this addition here, t plus the result of this addition. And so uh, that way, that'll the result from that will get assigned to t. So we can chain together these uh, this addition like this the way we've set it up. So that's pretty cool, I think. So now let's just finish out divide by 3 just to kind of try it out okay I think that's all uh, I'd like to do to kind of show off the class with our nice operators alright fortunately no errors okay so we started out at 0 and added this so we got 2 days, 13 hours, 40 minutes, 15 seconds. That seems right. So we multiply that by 2. Okay, this looks good. We have 2 days, and then the 13 hours, or I mean 2 days times 2 is 4, but we have the extra day because this is 13 hours, so that times 2 uh, will put us over 24, so that was automatically handled. And then the 40 minutes also gave us an extra hour there. So that, that looks like it was handled properly. Um, and then we, when we did this chaining together of time objects, that looks good too, because this should be about uh, six days, because we got 12 and 11 hours. And then, so about six more days later, yeah, five plus six will get us 11. Uh, I'm just estimating by the number of days, because uh, it's too much work for me to do in my head to do all the way to minutes and seconds precision. Uh, and so then when we divide that by three, we got about three days. Um, I think that's about right. Yeah, and a high number of hours. So 16 times 3 will give us, oh gee, what is that, 48, I think? Yeah, wait, is that right? Yeah, <laughs> I think that's right. 48 hours, which is an extra two days. So when we bump this up to 9, uh, if we multiply this by 3 to kind of check our division, we get 9, and then plus the extra... Uh, two days, 48 hours, yeah, that's convenient, 48 hours is two days, so that puts us up at 11, and just a few hours because of the high number of minutes. 
and a high number of seconds. All right, so that's pretty cool. We got all our math working, and uh, we got um, these nice operators. It is important to note that um, operator overloading is completely optional. We could have written a divide by method and done something like this. That would have been just fine. Uh, we already know how to do that. But uh, on the other hand, it's kind of a pain to write out divide by every time. And uh, using an operator like this is really pretty cool, and it makes your class look pretty sleek, and it's, uh, it makes it even easier to use, which is ease of use is always a, uh, a plus when designing your classes. So I think that's it for this video, guys, just showing off operator overloading and implementing it in our time class. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.